Hayden Gooley is literally picking the brain of David Savard as much as possible because David Savard is a, is a shot blocking machine. Caden Gooley, those la- these last two games, has been a shot blocking machine as well, and delivering hits and literally sacrificing his body on the penalty kill. Can, can and, I say something that might sound very selfish? Sure. Well, <laughs> I, I, well, I don't know if it sounds selfish, but I actually don't want to get rid of Savard. If he, and I know he's, no, been, he's gaining a lot of uh, he's no. gaining a lot of value, and we might get something out of him. But mm. until we have an established defense core where we don't need him anymore. He's he's the veteran. He's our veteran. I say keep him. I say keep him. I say keep him. I love the way he's playing. He's got one year left. Keep him. Keep him this year. You trade him next year at next year's trade deadline. Maybe because he's going to be another year older. I don't know if his value drops. You but like like Kent Hughes right now is asking for either a first round pick or a first round prospect. So the demand already for him is high enough. Plus his contract, even though it's not expensive, there's still another year left. Nah, keep him. But honestly, I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't know what you guys think. We could talk about trade deadline that's coming up on Friday the 8th. I don't think Savard is going anywhere. Tanev went to Toronto. Uh, excuse me. No. Tanev went to Dallas. Uh, Toronto got this uh, Ilibushkov guy, whatever his name is. I can't pronounce his name. I'm sorry. Butchered it. Sorry? Who got fucking killed by Rempe in the first game and went off with a head injury. Yeah, well, he got hit. He got it. That was a solid fucking hit. I mean, right now the only defenseman is um, uh, Noah Hannafin again from Calgary, and maybe Jacob Churkin. Uh, unless there's other names out there that we haven't heard yet, I I don't know. I think David Savard, like a, a team I mean, that if wants you, if you want if you want to get value out of him, it's now or never, right? Because yeah. It is now or yeah, never. If maybe. you want to get rid of, because next, like you said, he's getting a year older. I don't know if next year he's going to want him or the value is going to drop. So if you want high value for him, it's now or never. And I wouldn't mind. A, I w- I don't want a first round pick. I would rather get the first round draft uh, prospect. Yeah, in my maybe. opinion, I, it, gonna, that I'll yeah, be happy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be that's going to be 100%. tough to get. So. Look, um, as far as I. Th- what I think is going to happen is that Kent Hughes, he has his phone. It's on sound. It's on ringer. Yep. You know, wait, he's going to play he's the not, game. He's not, he's going to wait. He's not, he is not going to be picking this up and dialing numbers and be like, Hey, I got this guy for you. He's going to just sit back, cross his arms and wait for that phone to ring. Kent Hughes is in no rush to do anything. No rush to get rid of anybody, anytime. I understand that maybe Jake Allen, but if it doesn't happen now, it's going to happen. It's, he's going to do it before next season even is remotely in our thoughts just to make sure that somebody out there has got a, an experienced goalie. Everybody knows who Jake Allen is. The, 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 whether his value is up or down, it's, it stays the same. David Savard, too. Like, everybody knows who David Savard is at this point. I don't think his value is going to go either up or down. It's because he is who he is. Ooh. These guys are who they are, and nothing's going to change. I honestly don't think I, anything's going to happen. I mean, if, if something was going to happen, it would have happened right now. I mean, what, what's I've, three more days going to do? I do add more value I to Allen or Savard? No. So I, I, I think exactly. it's going to be a quiet offseason. Um, it's going to be a quiet deadline for us. For At least I, for the Montreal Canadiens, is. Yeah. I just genuinely hope, and Montreal Canadiens fans on the whole collectively owe David Savard an apology for the season that he's put out. But guys, uh, on the business side of things, I, I completely disagree with you. I, I, I'd love to, like in theory, I'd love to keep him, but absolutely the second that there's a first round draft pick that's offered for him, even if it comes without a prospect, I take it. I, I'd rather have those three first round picks this year, do something very interesting with them, and David Savard, I am not at his age. I am not rolling the dice that he comes out, he comes to camp out of shape, that he has a rough start, that he's not like his value is a certainty. And in comparison to a guy like Nick Suzuki or Cole Caulfield, we're not trading them. And I'm just saying his value is a certainty right now. But I would, he would be one of the last players that I would bet on. 
to perform the exact same way next season. So strike while the iron's hot. Do it now. If they get, like Sammy said, I do agree with that point. The phone is right on the side. If the right call comes through and there is a first-round draft pick, please, Kent Hughes, go for it. Please. Oh, I think he will, but I just don't think those offers are going to come in. But if there is an offer that comes in for a first-round pick, you take it. You take, you take it. it. Run. Yeah. <laughs> I think we owe an apology to two players of this team. It's funny how the, the how everything turned around for us. <laughs> we shot on Montabo and Savard for the longest times, and now those are two hot players that we don't want to lose. It, add, add in a third player. I think we shot a lot on Primo and the kids showing that he could he could he could stay in this in this league. So, okay, so let's say apologize to Primo, who we wanted out a long time ago. Savard, who we, as soon as he signed him, we all said it was a political move and we fucking couldn't stand it. <laughs> That's and Montambo was the guy we wanted to trade him for a bag of pucks. And now we want to keep Montambo. We're calling mm-hmm. him our number one goalie. Mm-hmm. Savard, our fucking veteran defenseman who we don't want to lose part of the core. And Primo, who we think that might be a good backup. It's crazy how things have changed. But, hey, I love seeing this. But, I love but, seeing but that's this. A beauty. Is- yeah, I, I agree. It's a beauty about sports, and it gives us something to talk about. And I, I, Montembeau, I don't know, like, whatever work ethic he suddenly got. Well, I don't know if he suddenly got, but what, whatever he did after that very bad season, like, he's got to keep doing that. <laughs> he's got to just keep, keep working at it because it's working. Yeah. I, you know what? David Savard came into the Montreal Canadiens after a fucked up COVID season with no off, with no off season, probably no time to recover. Like that year that like the year that we fucking finished last, that year was just overall terrible for so many reasons. And one of them being that they go to the Stanley Cup finals and then a month later, yep, you're starting a new NHL season, a regular NHL season now. So there's just so much like the stars were aligned for a fucking disastrous season that year. And one of them is because of that. And I think David Savard, him too, going to the finals with Tampa, beating us, that signing with Montreal, barely had an offseason to recover and to train. It was just, it was a disaster waiting for it to happen. But like, look how he turned the table, like Anthony said. But.